Hello, grammarians. Hello, David. Hello, Paige. So today we're going to talk about plural possession, meaning when more than one person or thing or animal owns something else. And this, like most other types of possession, tends to involve apostrophes. Makes sense. Checks yeah. out. Yeah, cool. Um, so it's just apostrophe S, right? Like, I mean, why are we even making this video? Well, no. Oh. Apostrophe S is a rule that applies when the possessive noun is singular. So, for example, the dog's bone, right? That's one dog's bone. One singular dog possessing one bone. Exactly. What if I wanted to talk about, like, five dogs' bones? Like they had a bunch, like a big old pile of bones. Right. So that is the case where we will not use apostrophe S. What? I'm sorry to disappoint. I'm not disappointed. I'm just surprised. <laughs> not actually surprised. That's just a stage trick. <laughs> so if we're talking about five dogs and their bones, we say five dogs apostrophe bones. And there's no S after the apostrophe. So it goes S apostrophe. So we, we have the S for the plural and then an apostrophe per possession, but not a second S for possession? Right. We don't want, like, the dogs is bones. Okay. Okay, but the, the apostrophe at the end isn't about there being multiple bones, right? It's about there being multiple dogs? Yeah, so even if it's multiple dogs and they're possessing a singular thing... Um, so if five dogs all had the same favorite dog park. Right, because it's the best dog park okay. in the world. Okay. So in that case, you would say something like the dog's favorite park, right? Park is still singular, but dogs is plural. So that's why it's just apostrophe and no S afterwards. So this also only applies to plural nouns that end in S, right? So if I'm talking about one of our irregular plural nouns like uh, mice or geese or men or women, I would still add apostrophe S, right? Like, okay, so I'm imagining a department store. Mm -hmm. And there's a men's section, a women's section, and a mice's section. <laughs> okay. That is an interesting department store. Well, it doesn't take up that much floor space for the mouse section. <laughs> so I get that if there's more than one dog... It's D-O-G-S apostrophe. Uh, if it's a, a, a plural, irregular noun that doesn't end in S, then it's still just apostrophe S, like regular possession. What about family names? Ooh, okay. That's a good question. So let's say there's a family with the last name Harper. Okay. And I am going to visit the Harper's house. Okay. Right? So that's the house that belongs to all of the Harpers, the Harper family. Okay, so that seems pretty straightforward. But what if we're talking about a name that ends in S, like Burns? Okay, yeah. That can make things a little bit complicated. The way that names that end in S become plural is by adding ES to the end of them. So Burns becomes Burnses. And so Burnses without the apostrophe is how I would refer to that family uh, unit in total also, right? Like it's... Mr. Burns and the Burnses, or Dr. Jones and the Joneses. Exactly. Okay. So then when you want to make that possessive, as in the Burns's house, you make it plural by adding that ES and then put the apostrophe after that. Cool. So plural things that end in S don't have a second S after the apostrophe. Yeah. But irregular plurals like men, women, mice do. Yeah. Thank you, Paige. You're welcome. You can learn anything. David out. Page out.